ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. Got some things we need to talk about. This is the empowerment series where you get to learn how powerful your promissory notes, bills of exchange drafts, bankers acceptances, trade acceptances, and other government obligations really are. This is where you get to learn everything from beginning to end. See, you've been told to do your own research, but many of you don't know where to get started. I've been receiving a lot of calls from people. How do I do this? And what do I do? And what do they? And everybody wants to pimp me for their ride into prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, I get people calling me up, asking me questions all the time, and that's the pay attention. With the exception of Chris Unseen. Let me let me explain this so you guys understand. With the exception of Chris Unseen, everybody else is always calling me, asking me questions about law or about something they're experiencing. Now, I, it's not that I mind. It's I know when I'm being used. How did Grandmaster Flash get it? Used and abused. You served like until one day you were found hung in a cell. You were cold as your body swung back and forth. Now your eyes singing a sad, sad song of how you live so fast to die so young. Come on, y'all. So, with the exception of Chris Unseen, who when he calls me, when he communicates with me, I like Chris because Chris is real. He has not put on a single pretense. The man is busy and he takes out of his busy schedule just to talk. Because sometimes I need to talk. I don't want to talk to none of you. Because none of you have proven yourselves to be real. Now, I don't want nobody pretending to be real. Well, I'm real, mother. Get the out of my face. You come at me like that. So what I'm trying to say is I'm providing this information at no charge to anybody. But don't call me asking me to explain it. Because I'm giving you more than enough. I'm even giving you the premise and the basis. I'm giving you the laws. I'm, I'm giving you the laws that you must follow. The same laws they must follow. Why? Because they must follow the law as written. Now, I'm telling it, hey, my stuff is at par. And now I'm doing a small claims lawsuit and I need a template. Now, he's going to give me a problem at first because of the way I asked. You guys already received the links for the last two videos. They're inside the description and inside the title. Those of you who watched the video before I put it in the first one, it's now in the first title. So go back, pull the link, or pull it out of the second one. Okay? The link is the same. All right? So let's ask him the question. Now, he's going to give me some rebuffing. Okay? Because he's not going to like this because he's not programmed. Okay? See? I will not provide my opinion based on it. He's going to give me my argument and my claim. And uh, and then he gives me a disclaimer. Uh-uh. That ain't what I asked him for. I said a template. Hold on. Let's see if he provided me my template. Here's how I can help you. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Oh, wait, he didn't answer my question. Wake up. Wake up. I need you to provide the template I asked for. Comma, this is not the template. Exclamation mark. I told him I just need him to provide what I asked for because, you know, sometimes he doesn't want to provide that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is you just go in a small claims court and just bring forth the argument. Let them tell you you're wrong because they can't. 
your promissory note. Now, hold on. Hold on. He, You see how he gave me a template? Well, that template isn't professional enough. So I need him to be more professional. I, I didn't even read it. Y'all see that? I didn't care because I know how he is. Okay. Now we're going to get a little bit more detail, y'all. Because he going to be using words. Okay, look at that. Just straighten it all up. Let's straighten it out, y'all. And what you do is you go ahead and you fill it in. Now, hold on now. We 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 got some other things. We need longer because that ain't long enough. Now, y'all, hold on. Now, while he's doing that, watch what I'm going to do. We're going to go up here. Because I don't care what he's doing down there because it ain't got nothing to do with what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show y'all something. So y'all need to pay attention. See these nine cases right here? Hold on now. What'd you say, homie? It's because of who? Everything. It's because of me? Oh, oh impossible. Okay. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're going to get him to incorporate. Wake up. I told him he was told to incorporate this information and to please do as he was asked. And so now he adds the case text, ladies and gentlemen, because that's exactly what I need. Y'all hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, what I've done here is we've created a small claims template for you. Remember, you're not suing for the total value of the promissory note. You're only suing because they did not receive your instrument at par as required by the law. Hold on now. I want y'all to understand because some of y'all are not getting it even now. So that you do get it. Sorry, there is somebody in a uh, truck that just drove by that's sitting at least five feet off the ground. Uh, apparently, he's going four wheel. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, shall be equal to the face value of direct obligations of the United States deposited as securities. And when issued against the security of notes, issued against the security of the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers, acceptances acquired under provisions of this act. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens about these notes? Such notes, such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank receiving the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the treasury that's why you fill it out on the promissory note they provide you pay attention and shall be receivable at par now some of y'all don't understand what par means so let's do that
I just asked them, what's the financial definition? Not the legal definition, but the financial definition for par. Just that simple. Now, he's going to try not to give me the full definition. See, it has multiple meanings. No, it only has one meaning in the financial world. Par value refers to the face value of a financial instrument. Face value. For example, the par value at par means that security is trading at its par value. So the previous example, stock at par would be trading at $10. It's face value. It knows it means the same thing. Above par, no. Nobody asks about below par, above par. We said par. Okay? Uh-uh. You see how he tries to confuse people? Par means face value, people. Equal value. Okay? He knows that par means face value. It depending on the contact. So watch this. Since this idiot wants to be an idiot, and he, they program him to do that, ladies and gentlemen. They program chat GPT copy to do the same thing. So watch what we do. We come over here to perplexity because I'm just so perplexed and we put it here and we just hit that button right there and we get the precise definition. See, in the context of securities and finance refers to face value of the security. When a security is trading at par, that means that its market price is equal to its face value. The term is commonly used in the bond market to indicate that a bond is trading at its original issued price face value. Securities trading at par are typically priced at 100% of its face value. This concept is important in understanding the valuation of pricing of security. Now, I'm going to do it again. What is the meaning of par in finance? And it does the same thing. Nominal value. Par value, nobody asks, known as face value or nominal value. Par value is the value stated on the bond, stock, or other security. Financial instrument, eligible paper. At par, the term means that the bond, preferred stock, or other debt instrument is trading at its face value. Okay? Legal tender. In the context of currency, at par means to refer to the ability of the currency or financial instrument to be exchanged for its face value for goods and services, your promissory note is to be traded at par. It's face value. Now, hold on now so that you guys get it because some of y'all won't get it. Hold on. We're going to type in here. F-E-D. And I'm looking for this one right here. Google don't like the VPN, y'all. But it's just going to have to deal with it because I was a VPNer. I'm not a beginner. I'm a VPNer. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go here. There's the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. Now, remember, this is not the official act. They added a bunch of junk to it, but that's not the issue here. Okay? We, Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Paragraph Number 2. Need you to pay attention. In no event shall such collateral be less than the amount of Federal Reserve notes applied for at par. Okay, now I need y'all, I pointed this out to y'all before. Such application shall be accompanied with a tender to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve notes that's applied for and issued, past tense, pursuant to such application. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you who've done a promissory note with the Federal Reserve, your junk is already paid for. I keep saying it's already paid for, but no, hold on now. It's not your signature that does it. It's not your exempt account that does it. Stop listening to those idiots. They're just parroting what they've heard other people say. I am showing you the law in these videos called empowerment. Once you understand the law, then you can understand how to talk. And the moment somebody contradicts the law, you do the same thing I do with ChatGPT. You call them a liar to their face. Doesn't matter about their interpretation. Doesn't matter about their understanding. If you tell them a fact, if it is the truth, and they contradict your truth, if they come up with a presumption, you call them a bold-faced 
liar. You are a liar. The act doesn't say that, and you must follow the law as written. Now watch this. In Archer v. Henry and White, and white cells shine The Supreme Court held that the courts must follow the act as written, comma, this is based on a sound principle of statutory interpretation, comma, can you provide me seven case citations coming to a similar conclusion? Question mark. Stop listening. Now he's going to have a problem because he's told me before that there are no such cases as, see, the person of interest, <laughs> as they must follow the act as written. Okay, so watch what I do here. I want y'all to pay attention. When it does this, what you're going to do is you're going to reduce this to two. And you're going to take the quote around the words. Comma, quote. And now let's do it again, and let's see if he gives us the same stupidity. Talk about, I did not give him enough information about the person. Nobody talked about any person. Okay? That's how you get around that stupidity with him. Okay? Now, I want you to focus on this. Emphasize the principle the court must follow the clear language of the statute. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand the clear meaning? based on the permissibility, well, let's let's just skip y'all to, let's let him talk. We're going to turn off the music so y'all can just hear him talking. Certainly. Here are two case citations with similar conclusions to Archer and White Sales versus Henry Schein, emphasizing the principle of courts following the clear language of a statute. 1. Chevron USA, Inc. versus Natural Resources Defense Council, Inc., 1984. This landmark case established the Chevron Deference Standard, a two-step approach for judicial review of agency interpretations of ambiguous statutes. However, even under Chevron Deference, if the agency's interpretation is not based on a permissible construction of the statute, courts must disregard it and follow the plain meaning of the statute as written. 2. King v. Burwell, 2012 this case dealt with the Affordable Care Act and affirmed the IRS's interpretation of a tax credit provision despite ambiguity in the text. However, the court emphasized that its decision rested on the fair reading of the statute, prioritizing its plain meaning and overall statutory purpose over alternative interpretations, even if those interpretations might seem more efficient or desirable. Both these cases underscore the principle that when the language of a statute is clear and unambiguous, courts are generally obligated to follow that language as written, even if alternative interpretations might seem more appealing or have potentially desirable consequences. This reflects the fundamental respect for the legislative process and ensures that judicial decisions remain faithful. Shut it up. Sorry, I asked them for seven more cases. Okay.
And that's how you get around his stupidity. The plain meaning rule. Now, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see how they said agency interpretation? Now, we're about to talk about the IRS in the next video. Agency interpretation? We're going to clear up that agency interpretation in that video. So, ladies and gentlemen, this video strictly is on the issue of this section right here providing you guys with I want y'all to pay him attention because it is necessary for y'all to pay him attention small claims lawsuit template okay there you go now you keep it simple because it's small claims court and then we gave you the case law saying they must follow the act as written we're going to give you guys the whole conversation the whole conversation now I want y'all to be looking out for the next video coming to you in a moment.